Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Andrew Tam, Equity Analyst in CFRA's London office. Today I'm joined by Tuna Amobi, a fellow analyst from our US office. So Tuna, we've just published a thematic piece on the phenomenal growth opportunity uh, presently available within the US sports betting and online gaming space. How did the US industry get here? Uh, thanks, Andrew. I think really the, um, the the watershed event for the U.S. Um, you know sports betting was uh, the repeal of the uh, the PASPA, which is an acronym for Professional and Amateur Sports Act, uh, was repealed by the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, in June 2018. Um, you know what that act did was effectively uh, prohibit any type of uh, sports betting um, across the uh, across the U.S. Since the repeal of the act. Um, uh, the authority to uh, legalize sports betting was effectively devolved to the various state jurisdictions, uh, and, and which means that uh, the various states now have the ability to uh, to legalize uh, sports betting and i gaming, uh, which is online casino, across their various jurisdiction if they chose to do that. Right. It sounds like that was quite a pivotal moment. So, what have we really seen since then? Indeed, uh, Andrew, that was really the watershed moment uh, that set off uh, what I might call an arms race uh, to, to legalization across the various jurisdictions. Um, New Jersey was the very first state to uh, legalize uh, sports betting soon after the PASPA repeal. Uh, to date, some 27 states have legalized some type of uh, uh, sports betting, uh, whereas online sports betting specifically, it's legal in 18 states, uh, which in total represent... Um, uh, only about 30% of the U.S. adult population. Uh, iGaming, uh, which is the other uh, arm of this, uh, it's actually only uh, legal as we speak in only six states, uh, represent about 11 to 12% uh, of the, uh, the U.S. population. So what, what has happened is that the uh, uh, wagering has really accelerated uh, in the past several years. For example, uh, New Jersey is now um, hitting about 670 million uh, dollars in, in monthly, um, you know, uh, wagers uh, from a standing start. Now, cumulatively, um, you're looking about uh, north of $56 billion that have been wagered, um, generating um, approximately $4 billion in gross re gaming revenues. Uh, and the states themselves um, have collected um, over half a billion dollars in taxes. Remember, taxes is a major incentive for all of these states that are legalizing, and that's part of the catalyst that we see uh, so as much as these numbers look quite promising, I, I think that it's fair to say that you're just uh, scratching the surface and, uh, uh, and the U.S. market itself re remains relatively in its uh, early stages. Right, so no doubt. So with the industry in a relatively uh, infant stage, I presume market share sort of remains the, profit, uh, the priority overall? Indeed, Andrew, it's, uh, it's a land grab now, um, an arms race for market share, because really that's the way to play the game. You want to scale up uh, your customer acquisition, which remains a key focus. Uh, if I can throw out an example, Flutter, for example, uh, customer numbers have ratcheted up uh, almost 62% in its FanDuel uh, business, which is one of the uh, market leaders uh, driving strong uh, revenue growth. Uh, and, and you see, as a result, uh, FanDuel and others have been investing heavily in sales and marketing uh, with costs going up uh, astronomically uh, in terms of customer acquisition to win new customers uh, and to take advantage of the opportunity as more and more states uh, legalize sports betting. And you can see that same trend, Andrew, across, uh, you know, whether it's DraftKings or other operators, you know, customer acquisition remains key because really you want to get some type of scale that would allow you to uh, be able to reach more customers and hopefully figure a way to monetize uh, a lot of those customers. So that's why we think the game is still uh, in the early innings at this point. Right. So is this growth expected to end soon or, you know, can we expect it to continue for some time? Um, and, Andrew, I think that if I can use the baseball analogy, we're still in the early innings, as I just said, um, just barely scratching the surface. We just talked about only 29, 27 states where uh, sports betting is legal, uh, which effectively means that more than half of the uh, U.S. population still cannot place bets legally. Now, that kind of speaks to a potential greenfield market opportunity. Uh, and you see that even more in iGaming where I think the runway is even arguably longer with only six states uh, or about 11 to 12% of the population having access to iGaming. 
so uh, you know, to to a combination of various catalysts, you know, new state launches, uh, you know, penetration of high average span. Um, I think all of these factors bode well for extremely attractive uh, growth. In fact, uh, we at CF area are forecasting a total uh, addressable market uh, of some $25 billion to $42 billion by 2030. And this is a significant increase from about $3 billion uh, at the current levels. Now, this, we're talking about North America, primarily U.S., but that also includes some upside in Canada, which we uh, think is in the early stages of uh, also, uh, you know, going along this, this route of legalization. So all of this kind of means that the market should grow some uh, 8 to 13 times its current size. Uh, and then you're looking at compounded annual growth somewhere between 23 and 30 uh, percent over the next decade, which is uh, absolutely nothing to sneeze at. So presumably there's a number of companies that should really do well in terms of capitalizing on this opportunity then? Sure, and if I can call out, you know, three of those companies, um, you know, DraftKings, um, I think is a pure play. It had the IPO last year. Uh, they're actually uh, now on the uh, track of uh, launching across various states and uh, trying to capitalize on this. Uh, you know, we mentioned it a while, a while ago, um, Fanjuel, which is a subsidiary of uh, Flutter Entertainment. Uh, that is another key player to keep an eye um, out for, and they've been uh, looking for ways to uh, exploit this opportunity even more aggressively um, in, in the U.S. As, as one of the market leaders. And then you've got also um, uh, Bet MGM, which is a joint venture of uh, MGM Resorts and Entain, which is UK-based. So that is uh, another um, entity that we think is going to be able to um, establish itself. Uh, as, a, as a potentially formidable player. So all of these three companies, I, I think, can boast of being early movers in this space uh, that will, uh, is inevitably uh, attracting a whole lot of other potential players in this uh, uh, massive land grab uh, that's going to be really interesting to watch in the next few years as it unfolds. Absolutely. So thanks, Tuna. That's some great insights and thank you for your time. So for more detail and to find out more about this really attractive growth opportunity and how these companies are looking to capitalise on this, please see our recently published thematic report entitled US Wagering Off to the Races on CFREResearch.com. Thank you.